Okay. So, better late than never. So I apologise. If there's any outside noise, windows open. Um, it's it's hot. It's warm in the UK for first time in about six months. So yeah. Sorry, I'm running a bit late. Um, daddy duties and all that. Um, I haven't even shared this on social media, so I'll quickly do that. I might get some people in. So um, yeah, for anyone who does. Who is watching? And um, please do jump in the jump in the chat. And yeah, sorry, I'm really just rushed around like a headless chicken, just getting things ready. So I just need to catch my breath a little bit. <laughs> so da -da -da. okay, there we go. Let's get that posted. So yeah, um. Say hello if you're here. I'm painting a cauldron of blood this week. I was going to do my witch elves, but I thought, you know, I did some Sisters of Slaughter a couple of weeks ago. It was practically the same kit, but that'd be a bit boring for you guys. I thought, why not? Why not paint up a cauldron of blood? I'm sorry if it's not best camera angle at the moment. Like I said, I was rushing around trying to get things done. I haven't got things set up perfectly, but um, I can play around with it later. Possibly. So yeah, I haven't even got my setup. So I'll get some reference pictures up of this. So Cauldron of Blood. There's no there's no miniatures on it. I will get like the two little witch elves on there, but for the actual like Medusa or the witch hag, I'll just use the actual miniature and just stick them on there, because then you can play around with that. So, Cauldron of Blood. Just to get some ideas how to paint it, really. And we'll get straight into the painting. Straight in. So yeah, on the DW one they have like these dark red stairs, which I quite like. But maybe to match my army's theme, maybe we'll go like a dark purple or something. Or even the dark blue. But I think I'll have a dark blue on the guy in the middle. And um, they've got like brown around the stairs, we'll probably start there. And of course we've got the Avatar of Cain, which I want to do like blue as well, so... Not a massive palette of colours, so hopefully we can get quite a lot done on this guy. Right. Um, I'll also say to you guys that I'm not feeling 100%. Um, I've had too much sun, I think, in the last couple of days, and a bit headachey. And felt a bit... Yeah, earlier, but I feel like right now, in that sense, so... Yeah, I took my glasses off and I can't see your belly paints on the shelf. What a nice dark brown, so I'm thinking, and... Maybe a dryad bark, if I can find him, he's hiding away somewhere. What's this one? Um, so yeah, talk about yourselves, just um, trying to find my paints. I'm not going to keep the browns up this end, I think it's done a walkabout. Can't even see my other dark browns either. <laughs> not on the desk. Okay, we'll go somewhere else, we'll go on to the stairs, we'll go on to the stairs. So you guys haven't got to see it, just watching me. Trying to find paints all night. There's Nagroth Knight, we'll do Nagroth Knight. Cool, so don't particularly need a little brush for this. Use a larger one. Medium base brush, any good? It's not too bad. Okay, so yeah, let's get straight into painting. So Nagroth Knight on the stairs. So yeah, feel free to jump in the chat, say hey. Always like to know what people are working on currently. I know a lot of you guys will be painting or building stuff during these streams, so let me know what you guys are working on.
Also, have any of you guys pre-ordered or planning on getting any IDNF Deepkin? Um, I've ordered a few sets. So, probably see some IDNF Deepkin on the channel, on the streams, for the next few weeks. I've also been working on some Dark Eldar stuff. I've started doing what's in on that Instagram page. So just all elves for me lately. Yeah. Daughters of Cain, Idenf, and the Drukhari as they're called now. And because they're still elves really, aren't they? Technically. Although I'm doing a homunculus coven so they're strayed quite far away from your traditional elf or space elf. So yeah, I don't like that this is just really loose. And the Krond. Hope that's pronounced right. Hey there, I'm not paying that moment, I'm gonna sleep soon, but I'll pick up the pre orders tomorrow. Nice. Um Mathlin and the shipwreck for now. Money I need more money. Well, between Mefflin and the shipwreck is still a pretty decent output of cash. And certainly enough to keep you going for a while. Yeah, they are. They are beautiful. Uh, sleep. Lucky you. I almost cancelled this stream just to get some sleep, but knowing my luck I wouldn't fall asleep anyway. I'll just be laying there awake for ages. So I thought I'll do it anyway. Can't let you guys down. <laughs> There'll be a lot of metal under here, so. What's that base coat in that? There's going to be a lot of large, sort of base coated areas here. Is that mine? Yeah. I don't need that brush yet though. Just got a shake. Yeah, I mean I've pre-ordered um the large dude and the shipwreck. And the the HQ guy. And a few boxes of the is it Namati the they're called or something? Obviously, um there's a few box of the troops that will obviously be selling as bits, so I've ordered them as well. But yeah, for me it's um I'll have two squads of the troops for my I don't know, but I also ordered a spare box for myself that I want to just do some Dark Galdar conversions with. And then there's five boxes of them infantry ones gone on site. And then I just got one of each of the rest of the stuff, apart from the dice. <laughs> yeah, I answered it as soon as you type in. Um, I can't read mines. That's just a coincidence, I'm afraid. I wouldn't want to read mines. It's usually negative stuff that people keep to themselves. <laughs> so you wouldn't be... You wouldn't be reading a lot of good stuff. And then um, next week's pre pre-orders, I'll obviously get some more stuff. Um, we're only really going to stock stock the infantry to the infantry stuff on the site. Maybe some of the riders.
yeah, I I really like them. I really like the Deepkin. As I've already said on the stream a few times. But of course, get halfway through doing the army of them, and then something else will be released. And that's just how it always goes. Well, I must admit, I've done quite well with the Daughters of Cain. Been um, painting them for a few weeks on the stream. Uh, basic miniature paintings here. Hello. So, yeah, I, I did finish up the Armageddon Knights from last week as well. Um, here's one. So, really happy with how they came out. Basically, the hazard lines don't look too bad. They look, they looked a bit rough and ready when I was doing them on the stream. But once they've had the shading and stuff put in, they're quite nice. At least I think so. I know they're not dead parallel, but can't be helped. Yeah, really happy with how these came out. I will add some transfers to them, I think. Yeah. Looking forward to the Imperial Knights Codex. We get the new knight as well, I'll add that to the force. Have a little force. Quite a nice little force by then. Just a massive, massive thank you for the advice about my thumbnails the other day on Facebook. No, you're welcome. Um when you asked about your channel Obviously, there's just like there's no problem um, with the content. The content's actually good. I I've watched a few of your videos and I do enjoy them. And to be honest, um, the thumbnails was the only thing I could really suggest where the improvement was needed. Um, I don't even think ours are great on here. Um, but yeah, you need you need your thumbnails to really sort of clearly show what the video is about because um. Obviously, if people already subscribe to your channel and like your channel, then it doesn't really matter. You know, someone like me who is already familiar with your channel, um, I'll, I'll happily watch any of your videos regardless of the thumbnail. Because I know roughly what I'm going to be getting. But if there's someone new and, you know, maybe your videos come up as a suggestion down the side, that's when you need your thumbnails to really sort of um, grab people. No, you're welcome. Um... It's always nice to help out people, um, whether it be on, well, anything really, but especially on YouTube because it's tough. YouTube is tough. But I love that we have the Facebook groups. That um, all the smaller YouTubers. And I include ourselves in that because we're not a large channel. But it's nice that we have these groups where we can all sort of hang out. And it's nice sort of being part of that little community. Because, you know, you could be a big channel, but you could be on your own. You know, without being part of that community. It's lonely at the top, as they say. It's really cool. I, I, I've been watching a lot of people's videos here in the groups. And there's some good stuff out there. And Peter Nicholas is here. Don't worry, I haven't ignored you. Hello fellow hobbyists and Craig fans. I like to think people are more fans of um, the painting aspect than just me. Speaking of YouTube, I have no idea what our next video is going to be. Not a clue. Um, I've got some ideas for stuff, but I just haven't had the time to even start filming anything. Uh, probably another couple of weeks before the next bat rep. Phoenix, I <laughs> just started to cry.
thing I really like about your streams is that you can actually read the chat. It's not scrolling through insanely fast because people are spanning emotes. Yeah, that's because hardly anyone watches. <laughs> we have a nice tight knit little community. The same thing that I was saying about Facebook. It's nice to be in these little communities. Have a lot of regulars on here, which is really cool. I like that. So I'd, like, I'd always try and keep up with the chat. But obviously, if it got too popular, then that'd be difficult to do that and paint at the same time. We've really been discussing streaming some games for the future. Um, they might not be in this time slot. But, um,. We're getting getting close to having sort of a setup good for that. I just need to get another webcam really. And um, because it's usually me, Wayne, and Jab who do the the games. Then you know we can have two of us playing and one doing the chat, which would be quite cool. So that's a plan for the future. And we could also use that software, if it works well, to film different types of games as well to go up just as normal. But then we could have like multiple camera angles set up. So if you're doing like a Rumble Slam or a Shade Fire or something, you could have like the dice box um, in one camera and the game in another, all people's cards, etc. Um, I might even start saving up some of the Patreon cash to get a much better camcorder. One that can be good to stream directly from as well. So that'd be quite cool. Because you just can't. The cameras we use us. They're just quite cheap ones, really. Don't even have built in microphones. Um, they do have built-in microphones, sorry, they don't take um, external ones, which is worse. Oh, I need sleep. That'll keep me going now. As will Maltesers. I seem to be having like this sweets of the week. But Maltesers are one of my favourite ever. Mostly the silver areas. There really isn't a great deal to this. I mean, I'll do that. Spikes as well. But that's good because I can um, focus more on some of the more interesting parts, like this dude. Oh, I might base coat next. Before I do, I'll show you this thing. I don't know if anyone's seen it on our Instagram, but there's a little torture table, this mobile torture table. So I've got the, the zombies from the corpse cart and the bottom of the corpse cart. Then I've got the torture, or well, just like the medical table from the objectives kit. I will put a head on this servo guy as well. And there's like guardsmen on front. And there's intestines. Coming out, I'll make it look. I'll get green stuff on there. Make it look a bit more natural. I'm gonna have all like little syringes and knives and stuff from the Talos kit, prodding prod into him. And I think these knives on the, the zombie guys sort of gives it that sort of Talosy feel. Because I might use it as like a Kronos or, or a Talos. So yeah, it's all working on that. I'm just doing like this really sort of weird torture style, mutant style, um, really sort of morbid, like Dark Elder, Homunculi Coven. 
I've got this thing I made ages ago, which I'm probably going to use as a grotesque, like three sort of um, plague bearers sort of stuck together. Really cool. And I've been working on some racks. I did post up some racks on the um, Instagram page as well. There's one of them. I haven't put a mask on it. I was wondering if you like a face with like nothing on it, sort of thing. Maybe some eye holes, but not really. Sort of disgusting. And I'm sort of making some, making some up out of flagellants as well. And the rack set is like all, always out of stock on GW. So I'm sort of being creative and making up some of my own racks. So very much. And let's take a look at the arms of the corpse cart. I don't know what this head's from, it's hard to see on the camera, but I don't know, I won't find more of them. And I've got this guy as well, who I might turn into a homunculus. And I'll put some like stuff on his back, and then I'll give him like this hair. I'll stay in there. And I'll put on bed on that though, but that's what I might do. Now I've got an actual homunculus kit as well to do something with. I'm gonna make like a voodoo witch doctor one. A little top hat and everything. Whether I base it off the original homunculus model or whether I just do completely scratch built, I don't know yet. But yeah, um a few more racks and um, this one's converted this is like the leader of my racks. So I was using the um sorcerer, Chaos Sorcerer. I'll give him some rack weapons. Not quite happy with him. Um, Benjamin is here. Hello. Just showing off some of my Dark Elder stuff. My mobile torture ta table. Which I'm really proud of. I still need, still got a lot of work to do, obviously. I'll probably have one of his hands holding his guts or something. And the idea is that there's going to be syringes and stuff probing into him to keep him alive while he's been ripped open at the same time. and experimented on. And you'll notice he's lost one of his legs as well, just a bone sticking out. So, yeah. It's going to be quite a gory looking army. At least that's the plan. Benjamin says I'm well gel. <laughs> so, let's do Thousand Suns Blue. I'm just going to paint all of this avatar for now. Then I'll work out what colour is going to be what. Might as well be a bit messy on the base. We'll sort the base out later on. The only Dark Elder figure I own is the Homunculus and the Ravager, apart from the first edition stuff. Yeah, the old Dark Elder stuff. It's classics. I have a bit of a soft spot for the old Talos. Ooh, I'm thinking of a new project, a Plague Tower of Nurgle. I've never seen one done that I actually like. Yeah, that'd be awesome.
So yeah, obviously it was a bit of a late start today by about 10-15 minutes, so obviously I don't mind. Still going to the two hours, that'll be fine. So we'll finish a little bit after 10. Unless you're all fed up with me. Yeah, a lot of the old ones are metal. That's the only thing what puts me off the old Talos, because I would get one if it wasn't just a big chunk of metal. I still might. There's just something about it I like. I'll probably just get bash it with it. I guess it's because I used to have one. I did have a small Dark Elder Force back in the day. But I really like the Homunculus Coven, so... I do have somewhere, well I say somewhere on the desk behind me, the old metal Archon model. Um, one with the, um, like, he's got his helmet but then there's like a face, that like skin, sort of musk over it, it's awesome. And I want to use him and then have a miniature on his base with him, without their face. So it's like you just cut the skin off their face, that'd be cool. So the front section will be based off a screaming bell. Cool. That's the first coat of the Thousand Suns blue. Uh, let's have a look at my reference again. So yeah, like these bits will be silver, sword, and that. Base coat the actual blood of the cauldron of blood. Again, as always, I get a lot of the base coats down. It makes me feel more accomplished. I'm probably going to do all this gold on there. I'll do some gold around the cauldron. Pardon me. Um, so, imagine you get Gene Seal of Purple now and Dry Brush for steps. Because I want to do the Dry Brush on the stage early. And he looks around for his Dry Brushes, which are right here. That War Gamer says, What's good, everyone? And the weather. Certainly, although it's made me feel it blah, too much sun over the last couple of days has left me headachy and a bit nauseous, but I'm better than I was. Been very busy as well. And obviously, yeah. um, everything done with a baby takes twice as long. We actually fought today. We, we had a nice little walk around a park about 10 miles from us. And there's some, there was like a little retail shop and park nearby, so we thought we'd just pop into a couple of shops, have a look around, get, get a few bits. And the second we sort of got there, she just started screaming. So, end up having to just feed her a bottle in the car. 
which she wasn't taken quickly. And about half hour later we got to the shop. <laughs> So yeah, I'm kind of a bit heavy with the dry brush actually, I want this to really pop on the steps. I'll probably do it even get some like Lucius Lilac or something to really find that. And that Wargame says I'm Melton. And Alberto Lyon says Heil. Hello. Yeah, we shouldn't complain about the hot weather though. Like, winter lasted about six months. And then, just in the blink of an eye, it's gone from like just okay slightly cold to just full on summer like today and yesterday it was just the sort of weather we'd get in the middle of August I think it's going back to normal tomorrow but it's going to stay dry that's my favourite I do like it when it's really hot but there is you know if you just turn it down a notch then that's fine it was raining two days ago. Yeah, some places have rain. It might be raining again Saturday. Um, I see some places are due thunder. Man, Peanut says I struggle build an easy an easy build blight hauler. <laughs> I need to get some of them. Benjamin will be using a lot of green stuff, plastic art, and random stuff. Yeah, definitely, um, when it's built, you have to share that with us. Oh. Don't keep your edge paints and dry paints next to each other, because they look so alike. Uh, there you are. Pendulum says, but I like winter. I'm not a fan of winter, but... I'm not say, I just like it when it's just mild. It's just nice. Not too hot, not too cold. Goldilocks weather, that's what I like. But because I live about a five, ten minute walk from a beach, I think summer weather is slightly better. So... I just imagine it's quite busy down there today. I suggest adding the front tracks last. I'll try and remember that for when I get some because I do really want some. Maybe months before I can finish it, I need like two Lehman Rust demolishers for demolisher cans. Ooh. You could use some pipes though. Make your own demolition cans, I'm sure it wouldn't be too difficult. Corn one, the Tower of Corn. I don't know what it's called. Um, I sort of still got it. It's in bits somewhere, but I had like the Bane Blade Pace. And I basically copied GW's design. Then I had like some city walls, making of a tower, and a load of skulls on top. And I think I used a cannon from the 
Ogre Kingdoms. Built things in bits now. Yeah, Tower of Skulls. I made one of them. I'd like to get it out and um do it back up and give it a new paint job maybe. Never use a damn thing. And I had a big corn symbol from Forge World, what they did ages ago. On the front as well, that looks pretty sweet. Um how did the Amigas end up really well? Um I did show one off earlier on the stream. But I can show off again. So here he is. Um, I will add some transfers, I think. Because my other knights have transfers on them, so... Really happy with them. It's just a basic paint job. Obviously I did all the airbrush fun on the um, carapace, but the rest of it's just really basic. Like, the gold literally has had... The brass gold has had like literally nothing done to it. I just want just a quick paint job for now. I can always come back in and add shades and highlight when I need to, but they look okay, don't they? Yeah, it'd be really nice when they release them singly. Um, I keep trying to work out what the price will be. I think they'll probably end up being overpriced. I don't know what would be a sensible price for them, really. But yeah, they're nice kits. They are nice kits. Yeah, I've actually got a spare one. Which I want to kit bash for the hell out of doing like a Blanjitsu style thing. Or well, it could even find its way into the Dark Elder. Who knows? I bought an Amiga Knight on the way for the last of this month's money, so no more lunch is out for me. <laughs> I think they'd be 50 quid individually, I think that'd be ridiculous. Um, if they do end up with 50 quid plus, then that is crazy. I think 35 would be a good price. Maybe 40 at a push, but... I just think if they had more weapon options, they would be worth... They would be worth it. I bet they're a lot cheaper on Ely, mind you. On eagle-eyed viewers will notice there's actually no gun on top of them. Um, that's the only things that I haven't got round to doing. Um, I can't remember where I put them. I'll find them up. They're probably on the desk behind me. And um, they literally just need the gun barrels painted, though. I have no idea what your last message is trying to say. I fear the GW price is why I got one. Yeah, how much was yours? If you don't mind me asking. Because I've seen them go like in the 20s.
So just doing the second coat of a thousand suns blue. I do want to dry brush these two as well, so they'll get washed first, mind you. Get another coating on for blood. See, I don't know why I couldn't work that out. Um, good luck getting some sleep. I'm not jealous. I don't think I'll be awake too much longer after this stream. I had a really, I had a really early morning yesterday, and I think the tiredness has only just caught up with me today. Pounds not bad, is it? I don't think it'll surprise any of us to end up being twice that much. I think. Looking at the front here, I didn't actually paint that with a wheel. That's fine. Wondering what to do with the front spikes. Yeah, that's sort of a mixture of silver and the gold, so I'm gonna do that. So we'll get salt on here. I'm enjoying not having to be neat that much at this stage. So much just slapping down some of these um, base coats. happened to my darker browns um maybe we'll just do a different type of brown mm. what are you nah well that's my rhinox hide i'll just use that then we'll use rhinox hide just a bit more ready then dry it back just a little bit ow just poke myself So. 
So the plan is for in a few weeks to have the Daughters of Cain versus the Ideneth in a battle report. I think that'd be really sweet. Our next one, I don't know if we'll get one in before that or not. Possible. So let's get all this brown on. Next up, some gold. I want to do all this gold and I want to do all the cauldron gold. There's other little details which will also be gold, but I'll do them later on. It's all about just slapping on the larger base coat areas. I'm not worried about all this pattern on that because I just want to do the whole thing gold, give it a nice wash and that. Little dry brush look quite nice I think. Right, now I'm starting with Blight Hauler. Nice. I'm not that jealous. I say it every week, but I do really want to go back to my Death Guard. I'm so glad I did a painting tutorial on how I did the card scheme because I just cannot remember. I just want all this gold as well. Benjamin says, Right, I have an assignment tomorrow. Oh, wow. Have fun with that. Alright, well, thanks for joining us. Obviously, you can catch up with the rest of this when it gets posted to YouTube afterwards. Just so you can see if we talk talk about you when you're gone. <laughs> Which we wouldn't. 
And if we did, it would all be nice things. So, I'll need a couple of coats for gold. As awesome as Retributor armor is, um, just not quite good enough for one coat. Shall we get underneath? Lots of lovely hard to reach areas on this thing, that's why it's not on the base. That would make it even harder. That would definitely be a challenge. There are these big snakes up front here. So it's starting to look quite colourful. <laughs> I can imagine he's gone there. <laughs> I hope he watches us back. The blue's ready for a wash. Let's get this good old brush. Let's not be too generous, let's just really slap it on. Because I'll probably do a heavy dry brush off the base coat and then lighter highlights. 
and like dry brushes for highlights. It's a little bit wet on the back there. Just want to avoid that area. Obviously, a lot of this is going to be armor plates anyway. And this guy, the funnel, will be blue. Blood is almost finished drying. You can see quite clearly on the camera what's drying, what's not there. Um, paint's drying a little bit quicker tonight because obviously it's a lot warmer, so that's always good. Well, not always good, but it's good in this instance. Wouldn't it be good if he was wet blending? Sure, what colour to do is hair? Let's go orange. So. Ooh, hello, what's going on there? That was interesting. Oranges in better days. I don't know what it is about orange orange paints, but they just never have a good consistency. That's gone on looking very, very muddy. Need several coats. That blood's looking good though. Um, I was thinking just put an Agrax wash on that. Maybe. I don't know. No, maybe I'll just layer up with blood for my blood god and just make it look proper bloody. Yeah. I'm going to be using a lot of this for my Dark Elder. And there we go, I think we'll have a couple of coats of that. Okay, so we're just over the hour mark. I 
and I think I could probably get this painted in the next hour. It's not like it's gonna have a lot done to it really. It will certainly be very close to completion, considering how much I've done in an hour already. Oh, let's pull the thing out of shot. Cool. Okay. So using a light silver on these areas and on the sword, not really covering too great. Or if we gave it a bigger shake, but never mind. We can do a few coats if need be. I'm not too bad. <laughs> now gold details on there as well. But we'll worry about that later on. So yeah, it's coming along, it's coming along. But a lot of the time I was just waiting for paint to dry, so I was jumping back between a lot of base coats. Just trying to um, be as time efficient as possible. Especially when you're waiting for washers to dry. Which is what I'm doing now. Waiting for that blue wash to dry so I can just dry brush him up. Now I can work on his arm. I'm tempted just to go all gold on his arm. I mean I will do originally. So that just makes it easier to paint. We'll see. I think white armor would look quite cool on him as well. White and gold. But that might just be quite too much work for myself, but we'll see, we'll see. Hmm. That blood's looking good. 
The only thing is, it'll be difficult to tell when it's dry. So you could just literally just walk, have a stream of me just sitting there eating Maltesers. They're just so nice. I'm really just looking at it thinking like, well, that's drying, that's drying, that's drying. She got some backup stuff. To be fair, for some reason I haven't painted that back wheel. Um, I could wash a lot of that silver areas. But I wasn't originally planning to. Dry brush it up. See how that looks. Let's got this wheel now. And we'll go around. These bits as well. Hard to see, the lighting's not great, but I think I've got most of these silver areas. Like little bits and pieces I need touching up, but nothing major. It's okay because I can't eat any. <laughs> you know, I'll doubly enjoy these for both of us. I've only got like four left. Ah, oh, just so good. Even though it's humid and muggy and things are drying quicker, it still doesn't feel like they're drying quick enough. To be fair, to be fair by the time I dry brush this side, that wheel should probably be dry, so... I don't 
Let's get the dry brush. Try to use this brush. This other dry brush still looks a bit purple. Really, when it comes to dry brushes, um, you should use black brush cleaner. People always say, oh, use this stuff for your Winsor Newtons, you know, your good brushes, your expensive brushes. Which you should. But use it for your dry brushes, because um, they have a lot, they get a lot of paint in the bristles, because that's the whole purpose of dry brushing. And water alone doesn't get it all out, so you just swirl this stuff around on your hand with a damp brush. Rinse out. And it gets all that purple out. Just like that. Piece of cake. And you end up with a nice dirty hand, which luckily I always keep. I always keep my paint and pillowcase. An old pillowcase just covered in paint. That's so why um, when I dry brush something, I always just rub it off on this. So you don't have to go through like loads of um, kitchen paper or paper towel sort of thing. You just use this over and over again. I've been using it for years. So, not even like an old t-shirt or something. I know Chris at Mini Wargaming uses an old t-shirt. Well, I got the idea from, but I just thought, old pillowcase. So yeah, I load up my dry brush, get my trusty pillowcase, work it into the bristles as you do. Might as well stick down there. Don't put it on my lap, um, unless I'm wearing old painty clothes, because you could get paint on you. And we just dry brush. I apologise about the email sounds. I don't know how easy it is to see Isn't these highlights on the camera for the silver. You can just sort of see it on the wheel there. I might do a very thin wash of melon oil just to bring out a little bit of a shade, and I don't want it to be too dark. But just a little bit of melon oil, we'll do that later. these dry brushes there I should really keep one dry um well they dry off pretty quick try and dry this one off because I'm gonna need that for the blue areas sorry my face in the camera
still waiting for a retributor armor to dry. It's a little wet area there. We should be right for the blue. So just get that make sure this dry brush is nice and dry. We'll start it off with our thousand suns. Then we'll go to arum and blue and then maybe one of the um one of the dry paints maybe. Now I'm going heavy with this fast one. Be more of an overbrush than a dry brush. Trying to build the colour back up to a few thousand suns of blue. Paint on an eighty pound pullover for my mum. Oh, I heard vodka's quite good at getting acrylic paint out of clothes. I have a few. Um, I have a couple of old pairs of jeans with little splodges on them that I've kept because I want to try and try some different methods of getting paint out of clothes and if I can stumble upon one that's quite effective then that could be a good video because I'm sure a lot of us have had that problem. Um, if you can get the paint off before it dries it's not too difficult normally but these dry very quick and it's easy to get the odd splodges on you so yeah if there's a good method of doing it. Um, like paint stuff that actually sort of strip paint off models like biostrip doesn't work on fabric um, I'm sure there's probably a logical reason for that but because I have tried that that doesn't do any harm to your clothes but doesn't do any anything to the paint either and um, pouring debt all on them might <laughs> I won't try that Of course you can just colour match, for, you know, wherever paint is, if it's on a grey pullover, just get grey paint and just... <laughs> so, going to be lighter with this dry brush. Yeah, that's nice. Well, some of the areas of armor um, actually looks quite nice, but they're going to be all painted over. But this guy is going to be all blue, so. It's red to dry. So we just want to go one layer. I'm not sure how if blue. Not really the right. Blue, maybe skink blue. 
skin is more what I like. It's quite bright. It's closer to these turquoisey colours. Didn't realise until later as it was on the sleeve, which was resting in some spills. Yeah, eek. So on the face, we really want to go quite light. And then just... Arms. Definitely the hands and knuckles there. Paint over the paint, yeah. That's one way of doing it, probably not the best way, but... <laughs> then this guy. We can get a bit heavier with a dry brush on this guy. Just so he looks a little bit different. Make him a bit brighter. Cool. See, I'm not sure. Do I bother painting the avatar? the armour on the statue because I just really like how it's looking I might just leave them all blue because he's meant to be like a statue isn't he so, so I'm actually highlight, highlight up this armour so I quite like that I might just leave him like that because I really like that. That saves me a job. So next I'm going to wash the gold. Violet. It's a good, good wash for gold. A little bit of water in there. Oh, I'll do that and then close the lid. Right, but that's enough to do in this area. So. heavier on that. Cool, so I had some nice depth to the gold.
the last two more teasers. Okay. So we're going to need a lot of coats on this hair. I thought using a Jocara orange would just save me that job, so I'm going to put that back and get a get Troll Slayer, which is more of the colour I want anyway. Again, the consistency is just weird on an orange paint. It's just weird. Yeah, it's just something about them. Let's get in there. Definitely get in there. Wow, right, we've had all looking at the moment. There's like gold details I'll need to paint in maybe these little bits I'll do gold little bits little bits um like there so what am I doing? Bit of a silver on the sword. And on this headdress as well. For some reason I didn't paint the back of it. That's clever. So I think it's about time I start painting the little gold details. So, concentration mode, no.
kind of see. So yeah, just painting a few little bits of gold. Just makes that a little bit more interesting as well. Oh, it's just a big mass of silver. We've got these little sort of burners there. I'm going to put some green fire into as well. I think we've still got about half an hour left, so... This could well be near completion, which would be awesome. Definitely a lot more fun to paint than it is to build, but then watching these shades dry. It's more fun than building this thing. It really was a pain. Adam Rogers is here. Hello, thanks for joining us. Hope you're well. Um, I messaged you on Patreon. I don't know if you've got it. Just double checking where to send your reward to. Um, you might have replied already for all I know. I haven't se seen it though. Because it's sitting here, ready to go. Nice big, I want to put, show you a dress, but a nice big parcel full of bits. Ready to go, I just want to make sure I'm sending it to the right address. That's what you get um, if you're on our higher, highest Patreon pledge, which Adam is, which is awesome. You have replied, okay. Then I will check on Patreon. And that'll be shipped off to you tomorrow, so you'll probably have it by Saturday, Monday at the latest. And I apologize for the delay on it. I was a bit late starting them this month. But some good bits this month in the Patreon, and next month's going to be really good already because I've already got some of the bits together and they're going to be pretty good. And I 
I do apologise we haven't had any, like, um, early Patreon videos. Normally I like to put up a couple of videos a month early on Patreon. I just haven't been doing videos, like, quick enough to do that. So I need to get back on it. It's just time lately is insane. Um, I'm hoping possibly film a painting tutorial tomorrow or start one. A lot of people have asked me how I paint my custodies, so I'm going to do a painting tutorial for one of my custodies, guys. I've still got my wardens sitting on the desk. They just need little details finished to them, but... I need to get back to the custodians at some point as well. I haven't got much left to that. I haven't actually got that much left to paint for them. And it says, hi Adam, I hope your gift suits you. The amount of bits, um, Adam's our, our longest serving patron, so the amount of bits he's had, he could probably open up his own store. <laughs> Maybe that's a plan. I'm surprised there aren't really more sort of sites like ours. I know more have been popping up um, than there used to be. There didn't used to be many of us at all, but uh, I've got a few people doing it on eBay, I suppose. <laughs> He's figured out. I actually ordered some bits from a rival bit store, and I, I do from ten, time to time. I mean, I'm a hobbyist just like everyone else, so. But I got some rack bits for my Dark Elder and. Just can't buy racks from GW at the moment, so I just went looking online to see what bits I could just get for them. Can't get no bodies or nothing, obviously, but a few more spare arms and stuff certainly won't hurt. Now I'll probably just get some flagellants from GW. I need to order some more stuff from them for myself. I'll be ordering all this stuff and then the, I'll just get all the IDNF stuff for the weekend. I'll be occupied with them, but. Hoping I can get the new paints in time for next week's show. Um, they seem to be direct only, so I can't go down to my local gaming store and get them from them, so I have to get them directly from GW online, which is no biggie because I order from them a lot, but. Just hope they deliver. Um, in time for next Thursday, because obviously they won't ship until next week. So... I remember the good old days of GW, if you pre-ordered something you'd get it before the release. Now they don't even ship it till like, the Monday after. So, ugh. So, 20 minutes left. Um, I started late for those who weren't here from the start. So I'm just going until about quarter past. Do a little gold details on the sword, I think. Watch out for the online shop. It's funny because the World of Four doesn't really have a good reputation, especially when it comes to customer service, but they do. The problem is, 
because it's so hard to buy bits online and find them in stock, you know, people still buy from them. I honestly think, I mean, I try and have as good customer service as I can, I can get. I honestly think even if I didn't, it probably wouldn't hurt the business that much, which is sad, really. But I never let it get into that state because I'm not that kind of person. Sometimes, and um, yeah, I might be able to answer emails within a day. But I've had a few little issues with emails lately as well. I know a couple of people said they emailed a couple of times and I never got them. Which sucks because obviously I never try to ignore people. But if I don't get their email in the first place, they might think I am. Kind of sucks. But yeah, there are certain stores who don't even answer emails, which is bizarre. Could be a technical fault on their end, mind you. But for anyone who ever does, um, whoever's thinking of, you know, if there's anyone watching this who are like thinking, oh, I want to do an online business or something, it's not, um, you know, if you d deliver flawlessly and stuff like that, that's great. Um, but if you, if someone has an issue and you deal with it really good and swiftly, um, people actually remember that more than if you just did, you know, if you just delivered everything flawlessly. I think that's quite important. Because when you're dealing with thousands of bits a week, you're bound to miss the odd one. So if someone says all oh, those bits missing and you just say, oh, I'll get a replacement sent out to you, then, you know, that's more memorable than just ignoring them. Choose orange for the hair. Is that about four coats now? It still looks crap. Looks better on camera. <laughs> it's looking nice. It's looking nice. I'm not happy with this brown though. I think it's too dark. Might do a lighter brown on that. Oh, I'd quite like a doom ball. Yeah, that's better. I like Doom Ball Brown, I think that's a nice brown. Nice and ready.
Okay. So about a quarter of an hour left, just under. And you know, we're at a really good stage. I'm in touch with Doom Ball Brown. Um, <laughs> Silver's pretty much done. I'd say I might give it a light non loyal, but maybe I'll just do that right at the end of the show and then I can just leave it. Um, I'll add up some shade to these little gold areas, I think, next. Back with the old Duty Violet. Um, one area that won't be done is the bloody hair. Of course, I still have to do a base for this. Which is going to be interesting, because um, I'll have to sort of put the flock and stuff down first, but then it'll be a pain to glue to, but just super glue it to it. I need to go around the cauldron with the wash as well. I think, that's... I think I did do it originally, but it's just not dark enough. Not for my tastes. a bloody heart in the hand of the avatar which I will paint might as well oh, why do I touch the arrows I just washed we do it just go around with fingers in it Bloody hat. And this orange is still drying. Now we've got the green fire. So that's the next thing to do. Start with some cavaloid green. Give it a shake. So the fire on Marathi's base, I did green as well, so I'm going to match that.
Cool. So I still need another coat of metal on the outer. Yeah, it's looking alright. It's looking alright. Okay, there we go, there's our orange. Still a bit wet in the recesses, but not too bad. Okay. Yeah, so that brown on the side definitely looks a lot nicer. Happy with that. Does need a second coat. So we've got just a few minutes left. So I'm really happy with how far I've got on this tonight. And the two hours have just flown by. Absolutely flown by. But I feel a lot more awake than I did at the start of it. Um, I don't feel as headachey as I did at the start of it. I think um, this stream has just helped me take off, take my mind off all that. And I think the coke. It's probably helped. <laughs> Which is good because I just need enough energy just to take the dog for a walk after this and then I can relax. Ready for a busy, busy bits box day tomorrow. I am gonna get on it. There's gonna be plenty of stuff restock restocked on the website tomorrow. Obviously, get all the orders out first thing, as I tend to do. Yeah, I've got a few bits going up for restock. Need to crack open the Cadian Command Squad so I can give this guy some arms. I've got a few of them going on site, but I'll be stealing a couple of arms from them. And, um, yeah, it's going to be a busy old day. But that's what I get for taking a couple of hours off today to enjoy the sunshine. <laughs> but I always, always make up for lost time. Because otherwise, I couldn't really afford to, not to. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm hoping I can just get another coat of orange on, and I want to nail the oil up. Oh, none oil up these metal areas. So maybe that's what I'll do. Just a thinned down version of none oil. Thin it down with some water. Because I don't want this metal to be too dark, but I, it needs some depth. It needs some depth. Of course, um, doing this right at the end of the show, I haven't got to sit around watching it dry. And more importantly, <laughs> neither of you guys see. So yeah, as always, um, look out for it on the Instagram page for a completed shot of it. Um, I'll try and track down the elves what go on it 
get them painted up as well. I could have actually got them and done a bit on them while we were doing this as well, but never mind. Well, I'll try and focus on getting this finished. Obviously, the Iden Effort out in a couple of days. And they might take my time away from me, and I'm really getting into the Homunculus Coven. So. It's just nice to sort of get let loose a bit with conversions. I find. I don't know, there's something about Age of Sigma. Where I don't seem to be, I don't do a lot of conversions for. I don't do a lot of conversions for Age of Sigma stuff. I I do I just seem to be building a lot of stuff out of the box. Whereas I've never I've never been like that in 40k so much, but I don't know. I think time's a big part of it. Sometimes um, converting miniatures can take almost as long as painting them. This thing has. Took me quite a while because it's just trying to get the right bits together, trying to find them. You know, I started work on that a few days ago, so. I must say, it's coming better than my hauler. <laughs> Well, it's kind of a speed paint. You know, I'm only going up for a basic tabletop standard on this army, so... I just put a little bit more effort into Marathi, really. But the rest of it's just sort of a... basic tabletop standard speed paint type thing. Um, I'm not really liking the shade too much on here. That's where I'm going to leave it, I think. If I just quickly do these little spikes. <laughs> oh, I think that, that one was done. Yeah, they're fine. Hands are filthy. So that's where I'm going to leave it. Right there, and considering that it was just undercoated black when we started for two hours' work, it's almost finished. I'm quite happy with that. It's looking nice. I thought it was more dark covered standard. <laughs> really happy with the avatar, even if it's just a simple blue wash dry brush. I really not gonna paint the armor panels or nothing. Keep it more a statuesque look. I'm gonna get another one and have on the base. I'll probably paint them a similar way. Really not liking how the wash is sitting on his head though. So we'll just Get rid of where it's pulling up. There we go. Yeah, I'm um, just pulling up on the sword as well. Ah. Yeah, very happy with the progress there. I've just got to touch up the... Well, not touch up, but finish highlighting the fire. A few little gold areas can just have a little highlight. And I've got to finish his hair. But that's pretty much it, really. And then a base for it. Maybe another layer of blood for blood god, but I think that's okay. So yeah, really, really happy with that. I'm glad I did this and not the witches. Um, something different for you guys to watch, a bit more interesting. I've had a great fun painting that, and I hope you guys have had fun watching me do it. Um, Alan Rogers says it looks great. Thank you very much. And um, so yeah, thank you all for joining me. And um, same time next week, hopefully, I won't be late, and it will certainly. Definitely, almost definitely, you never know, but it should be Iden F Deepkin. I have no idea which miniatures I'll be painting from the Iden F Deepkin. Um, so it depends what takes my fancy. The big guy with a big wave cloak thing is one guy I really want to get started on. Um, it all depends if I can get his cloak airbrushed in time, because I, I won't do airbrushing on the live shows because you'll be looking at the back of my head and that's no fun and I can't see you guys so but yeah I'll airbrush that cloak so yeah maybe if I get him to that standard we paint him out otherwise it might be the guys or what what not maybe even the ghost ship who knows anyway um yeah thanks for watching 
good night all. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'll see you all again same time next week.